I was、um, born in a normal family.、Uh, I would not say very poor, but it's a poor family.、Um, I I did not study very well. I failed exams again, and again in the primary school, middle school, and everybody thought, you know, you are hopeless for.、Um, and then when I graduated from、uh, high school, I tried to join, you know, to study in the university. First year I failed, second year I failed, and then I started to looking for jobs. I applied a lot of jobs, did not work out, and I tried the third time. Joined the、uh, past examination and went to the teachers college. And after four years, I hate to be a teacher because no man wants to be a teacher in China. They, they think teachers, you know. So I said, "No,、nah, I would, I would have loved looking for jobs in the other field." Well, in all my early days, I applied jobs for at least more than thirty times, all rejected. None of them even got one chance. I applied jobs one day for KFC Kentucky Fried Chicken. Twenty-four people went. Twenty-three people accepted. I was the only guy. And five people together, classmates, we went for a job in a, as a policeman. Four people accepted. I was the only one rejected. And I applied for a job together with my cousin to work in a hotel as a as a guy in a serve in the hotel. My cousin was accepted. I was rejected. So I came back. And my mother looked at me and say, "Oh." So, and I told myself my luck has not arrived. Someday, something is waiting for me, but not today. And then when I started Alibaba, 1994, at the end of the year, I, I got an opportunity to went to went to USA. I discovered internet. I think this is something very interesting, because if it's a network around the world, and this will be something might change the world. So I came back to China and I started my company, and it was so difficult because China was not even connected to the internet yet. 1994 was terrible experience. I worked myself. I had a joint venture with the other people, and then did not work out for three, four years. And then nine, year 1999, I started Alibaba. I invited 18 friends. Most of my students came to my home. I made a speech for two hours. I believe this thing is going to be big in the future, e-commerce. And everybody said e-commerce in China was hopeless because no payment, no logistic. China internet speed is so slow. At that time, there's no mobile phones, no payment, no credit card system. There's nothing. And I believe it in the future, internet is going to change China. If we started. And continue to work hard. We have the chance. So, 18 people in my apartment. We decided that one day we will make a company that will be the top 10 companies in the world. We gathered the money. It was so difficult, but 19 years we never give up our dream. We believe that we should use the internet to help small business. While at that time, most of the e-commerce company in America helping big companies, we think we should help small business. They think, Jack, you're crazy. Small business don't have money. How could you help people who don't have money? And I say, let's help them to make money. When they make money, we will make money. And America at that time, they say, e-commerce should help people to save the cost. I say we should not help a small business to save the cost, because small business know how to save the cost. They want to know how to make the money. <laughs> so we do the opposite. Most of the American e-commerce go big company save the cost. We say help the small business, help them to make the money. How to help them make money? We help them to sell online. A lot of small business. They don't have money to go to the trade shows. They don't have the money to attend all the negotiation or all the big business forums. So we say we help them to promote on the internet. That is the way. So for 19 years, it was so difficult. There is no no payment. We built at the payment. There is no logistic. That's a built at the logistic. There is no credit rating system. That's a built at the logistic system. And after 19 years, we came to today. 
There's some lots of lessons that can be learned there about a lot of lessons. Never give up. Out. If you have a dream, <laughs> if you have a dream, don't give up. A lot of people only talk dreams, but they don't make dreams in reality. A lot of young people have a great ideas in the evening, but in the, when they wake up, they do the same thing. <laughs> the most important is not only dreaming, but making sure make the dreams realistic and don't fight don't think anything you do you will succeed tomorrow or next year for people like us we don't have money we don't have a rich uncle or powerful father the only thing we compete with the others is our vision we believe 10 years later this will happen and we get the team start to do I just want to focus on artificial intelligence and the fourth industrial revolution and how you think that people in South Africa and the African continent need to start preparing for that and making sure they don't get left far behind. Well, first, I think there are a lot of things talking about artificial intelligence and robots and IoT and people start to worry. Let me tell you, don't worry about it. Young people, don't worry. When you start to worry, you're getting old. Don't worry. People say, ah, artificial intelligence is going to replace people. Trust me, human beings are always smarter and wiser than the machines. The first technology revolution, when the train comes, people say, ah, this is going to replace jobs. A lot of people hate it, but train create more jobs. People got disappointed because machine is stronger. Machine is always going to be stronger than you are. That's why we design machines. People believe that machine one day will be smarter than human beings. I tell you, don't worry about it. Machine will be smarter than you are. Computers, they never forget. They calculate faster and they never get angry and upset. <laughs> they don't need to sleep. So don't worry, they're smarter. But human beings were wiser. Machines only have chips. Human beings have a heart. So you should have confidence. But how people should do it, I think very important for any countries. Let's think about one thing. For a country, if you want to develop, there are three basic things very important. The first is education. It's always good invest in education and investing in education investing in people is the best investment in the whole world and second thing is trust and build and support entrepreneurs make entrepreneurs the heroes not making those game players the heroes we have to sure that it's entrepreneurs that they will use the technology education go and the top is a transparent, efficient government. So efficient government, entrepreneurs, and education. For catching the opportunity of IoT, artificial intelligence, very important is education system. The thing I worry about, not only China, USA, the whole world, the, third, the fourth technology revolution coming is very scary. The first te te technology revolution release the power of human beings, the machine. The second technology revolution release the distance, the cars, the trains. Now this technology revolution release the human brain. So it's going to be it's a mentally, fundamentally change the human lives. But the thing, the education system, the things we teach our kids, the way we teach our kids in the past 200 years are for the industrial revolution. When the digital time came, the thing we teach our kids will be replaced by machine. Machine will do better. We have to change the education system. Have to change the things we teach the kids that they can do better than machines. They can be more creative, more innovative, more constructive, that machine can never have a chance to replace them. That is something, it's an opportunity for every country. And please, any country, please pay attention to the following. Pay attention to those people who below 
30 years old. They are the internet generation. Please pay attention to those company have less than three or 30 employees because these are small companies. This technology revolution is a big challenge for big companies. It's a great opportunity for small companies. Small is going to be beautiful and small is going to be powerful. And please pay special attention to the next 30 years. Next 30 years is going to be the biggest challenge. It's also going to be the best, biggest opportunity. Most people will complain. But those people who solve the problems of complaint, these people will be successful. Let those people complain. You should solve the problem.